Well, hello, hello, General Hospital Daily Recap fans. Today's Daily Recap is for Tuesday, December the 5th, 2023. Tuesday, December the 5th. Well, you know what? This just broke my heart. The absolute anguish Anna is feeling in her heart. I mean, it's like Felicia says, you, you want to talk, Anna? But not as high, high, not as high as mousy voice, but still Felicia, but you know, take it down an octave. And Anna just broke up. She didn't even look like Anna. I really felt this scene. She said, I shot a child. I shot a child. She, now, see, it doesn't matter that Charlotte was stalking her. That is, does not matter to Anna. What matters to her is the position she was put in by Valentin. Because he decided he didn't need to tell her anything. He decided he was going to keep her in the dark. Ugh. And she said it, she's going to be affected by this for a long, long time. And I tell you what, what that reminded me of, everybody. I was younger. Oh my goodness. I think I was in my 30s. I was in my 30s. And I was driving down the street, not speedy. See, I'm driving and my eyes, because see, in my 30s, I had younger ones too. I mean, I've got older kids, you know, they're in their 40s. Um, but in my 30s, I had, you know, toddlers, one, two, and then some six, seven. I mean, well, actually seven, eight. They were older. It's a gap of like six years. But anyway, I'm driving and I see a woman with her toddler. And I'm coming closer and this chick doesn't have the toddler's hand. And the toddler dashes off the curve in between the parked cars on the street. And she's just calling his name. And this is a toddler. Now, mind you, she had her bag in her hand, maybe his diaper bag, whatever. I don't, look, my focus wasn't on what the chick was carrying. And I'm using that word nicely, chick. I really want to say another word. But she let the kid step off the curve. And now I'm approaching closer. I'm putting on my brakes. I'm putting on my brakes. And you know, I stopped my car. Now I wasn't on a busy, busy highway. I was on a residential street. But see, that's where a lot of the hit the 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 pedestrian you hit it in your own neighborhood, in the neighborhood. I stopped my car, everybody. And I, I'm serious. Daily recap lady was cursing like a sailor. And I told her, why did you not have your child's hand? This is a toddler. Kid had to be maybe two, maybe. I said, you allowed this child to get far enough away from you off of this curve in between these. I never had I not been looking ahead. Seeing why is she walking down the sidewalk there, not holding this toddler's hand, and the toddler is on the street side. She is to the right of the toddler. Whereas you, everybody, we know we're walking down the street with toddlers. We're closest to the street. The toddler's closest to the lawns or whatever's. And I'm telling you, I said, had I hit your child I would have never been the oh my goodness I was just off the charts because see I feel Anna's pain I, I just if I hit a child you know I feel bad for an adult 
but a child. Oh my God. So I think that's why that scene hit me so hard. Mm, you know what? I'm, I got to move on because I'm getting a little bit teary eyed here and mad all over again. And goodness, that was 30 years ago. Oh, okay. Let me, let me move on now. I didn't know that was going to hit me like that. Uh, Curtis comes to see Sonny and he tells Sonny what he's looking into. Tell Sonny, I got to investigate. I got to find out. And he goes, why not let the police do it? He said, look, they have to deal with every case that comes into that precinct and they haven't found out anything yet. He said, Sonny, I was a cop. I was a detective and I was a PI. Okay. I know how to solve a case. And if this case is going to be solved, I'm going to have to do it. So Sonny's like, I respect that. He said, because I got to know who's responsible for putting me in this chair. And Sonny said, I do the same. He goes, I got some questions for you, Sonny. Give me some names. What names? Who do you think? Right? And he goes, you need to talk to Anna about this too. And he goes, I will. But, but I want to talk to you. So Sonny says, do you have access to the police files? Curtis looked at him and said, yes, I do. Sonny said, good, because see, now that's going to give you a leg up. And then Sonny was telling him, do you know the name Pikeman? Curtis says, yes. They're blah, 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 blah. You know, special ops, dealing in arms, dealing blah, blah, blah. Right? On the good side, on the bad side. Okay, so Sonny tells them about the gun that was found in the room, right, where Curtis was shot. He says that was a WSB. It had been confiscated by the WFB, WSB. No one should have had access to it. He's saying, and now Pikeman has this unspoken little deal that their agents will work for the WSB and the WSB ex agents will go work for Pikeman. He said, that's a good place for you to start. So Curtis is like, mm, okay. So Sonny's getting, he goes, but Anna has more information on that because Anna had uh, some information on the guy that turned up dead. That was WSB, right? And Anna, he thinks Anna feels that this this guy. I don't mean, I don't know if Sonny said for Seth's name or not. Um, had took the stole the information Anna had on this deal. So Curtis says, okay, he's going to go see Anna, which is going to be good. I honestly believe Curtis and Jordan they're going to solve the case or be very very instrumental in solving the case, very instrumental. And it may be a situation in the end, in order to protect Jordan, Curtis might hop up out that chair, right? That may be the first time he walked. He might, cause you know, Curtis has been working on his upper body strength. He might push himself up and adrenaline kick in and Curtis go run a mile, <laughs> save his Jordan. Okay, so that's going to be good. I'm liking how they're doing that, where they're going with that. Uh, we also have Mr. Brennan. Now, I was wondering where I saw him before. I saw him before in the WSB office. Remember, was it Robert that called him? And he was on the phone. And in his background, right there on behind him on the shelf, it had a folder that said Pikeman. It had Pikeman's logo on it. And so now we got more background and more history with him talking to his little man, Hume. Right? And, when I, and I mean that, his little man, Hume. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> so he was saying how Forseth failed. So Anna was right. Forseth was said to get the documentation from Anna 
But see, here's the deal. This is how they're trying to throw that storyline in together. Before Anna moved into this apartment, where was that locker with all that information? Robin had it. Anna didn't even keep it in her house. See, other, it may have been WSB that, that burned her house, for set, burned down her house. Trying to make sure whatever she had, those papers were destroyed. But see, here's the deal. How would he know? How would he not know they weren't even there? How would he know that Robin sent the chest and Anna had just put it into her house? See, all of that's that, that loose end writing that they don't want us to think about, right? But he was coming there that night to Anna was right. She would have been right to come in their arm, ready to blow somebody away because Forseth would have been in there. And he would have, because Brennan said Forseth's orders were to eliminate Anna. So now I honestly believe that Forseth was shooting at Anna and Forseth was shooting either Anna or it was really son Anna. But now Pikeman is pissed because Sonny is now out and out, not going to do any more shipments. And so what Hume said is, okay, boss, so who are we going after? Who is going to be the actual target? And Brennan looked at him and said, both. And he out and out said, they're going to use Carly as leverage. Because he said, Carithos won't accept the money, boss. Got a little dip, some dry skin on my nose. Um, Carithos won't accept the money even though we doubled it. He goes, some people aren't motivated by money. Look, Sonny has more than that $5 million or however much was in there. Sonny's wealthy. He goes, some money is not a motivator for some he said, you have to find out what it is. He says, Carly Corinthos or Carly Spencer, whatever you call Carly. That's the motivator. So like we said, like we knew, he came in and he targeted Carly right off. So we're going to see who else he targets. We're going to see if while he's at the Metro Court, he tries to charm Nina as the perfect model guest at the Metro Court. We're going to see how he, see, and Nina want to be all in it. Carly, if he, if he hit her too hard, Carly would smell a rat. I don't know if Nina would. Now, Nina does not have roving eyes, but Nina could probably be distracted, right? She could probably be distracted. So this is going to be good. I'm finally seeing a storyline build up that's actually going to be good to me. So I'm really, really happy about that. Now let's go to, we have Ava. Now Ava just waltzes in with her coat, talking to Cyrus saying, "You did you kill Austin? I know you killed Austin. And she just smug and just, you had me kidnapped. He goes, oh. hmm. That's, the, um, I don't know where you got your information from. She goes, oh, you did it. It was you. Mason was following your orders. And Austin did what you said and you killed him anyway. And Cyrus says, you want to go talk to my manager? And Ava says, why? Something she said flipping like to give a recommendation or something she said. And he said, no about my alibi. I have been working late here every night since I got this job. So I have an alibi for the time that Austin was killed. He says, and you know what? The way you're talking about Austin, like, you know, just so flippant, you're the one that everybody got to look at. Because it was his cousin that kidnapped you. He said, do you have an alibi 
for the time that Austin was killed. And she, she went from flip it to, and she turned and she walked away. And I thought, well, Ava, why would you show your hand like that? Why wouldn't you say, I absolutely have an alibi? Absolutely, yes, I do. And the police have already questioned me. Have they questioned you? See, I'm not going to look like, oh my God, piss me off. No, I don't have no alibi. Don't ask me about, come on, Ava. She's losing her edge. You know, I don't force it, Ava. It's not even going to come in forceps crosshairs, not forceps, Brennan's crosshairs, because Ava is meaningless to him. Ava is not a good way to get it, Sonny, which is why Ava was saying all along, see, only Cyrus <laughs> thought Ava was a good way to get information on Sonny, because Ava's like, he don't share that kind of stuff with me, see? But Brennan knows, he. Carly knows, because she ran the business. They know all that. So Ava goes barreling out of there, right? And then they had a real nice scene with Christina and Blaze. A real nice scene to where Blaze was saying how, you know, she has to, with her profession, she just can't come out. She goes, you know, now that we're in 2003, I do believe I could come out and my fan base, my fans will still accept me because it's more acceptable now. She goes, but my strict Catholic family would not. She said, it, it just, it won't work. She said, so I have to, and Christina talked about it coming out to Alexis and coming out to Sunny and you know, Sonny accepted her right away. And, you know, Alexis accepted her. She did not ostracize her, but her dad, he, she goes, my dad just accepts me unconditionally. So she was encouraging her. She goes, you would be surprised at what your family, how they will accept you. And then she says she has this uncle that for some strange reason, the family won't talk about, the family won't talk to. He's just mentioned, it's like he doesn't exist. She goes, I don't know if he's alive or dead or how to reach him. I tried looking, but Christina's like, have you tried looking on social media? And she goes, yes, there's, there's so many with his name. I just don't know, especially not knowing what he looks like. She goes, I just kind of want to see, was he outcast because he came out to my family? So, you know, that was kind of nothing. We'll see where that goes. You know, I mean. It's going to be a whole big coming out story for Blaze. But, you know, um, then we have, see, Cyrus is getting all the traffic. Laura comes to see him. And I knew Laura, she felt something when she saw him being berated by the manager. And it's like she told Alexis, I would like to think everybody deserves a second chance. And I would like to believe that my brother is sincere. I'm hoping so. Um, but she's not saying, look, I believe everything he says, not at all, but she's hoping so. So she goes in and she says, oh, hi, Cyrus. Uh, he goes, we're closed, Madam Mayor, but I think you know that. And she says, no, I just stopped by, you know, to see how you're doing. And she goes, my, they have you working here, you know, late hours, don't they? And he looked at her, he goes, this seems to be my day for visitors. And he goes, you know, Laura, it's like, why are you really here? And she goes, no, I mean, just that. You know, I just came by to see how you were. He goes, see, he said, you, well, oh, I better not show up at your, your place of business. Okay, I've been warned against that. Yet you show up at mine. And he's meaning after hours. He's not meaning because you came here at eight. Because, you know, she goes, well, the difference is I work in a private office and you work in a public place. And he goes, oh, so that's how you're going to rationalize it. Because what he's saying, he goes, because see, we're closed. So, right. But what he's saying is, you know, 
you can't even acknowledge me like a simple human being. And I know what he meant. He meant when she was there earlier with, who was she there with? Alexis. When she was there earlier with Alexis, which is kind of what I said. She didn't even like say hi, Cyrus. She didn't even acknowledge like he was somebody she knew. And that's her brother. Yeah, we may be not be eye to eye, but I'm like, hey, how you doing, girl? You know? Hey, Cyrus. You know, when he dropped it. Oh, sorry, Cyrus. You okay? Any, you know, anything. He goes, you know, it's like my mother. My mother won't even speak to me. She won't even acknowledge when I'm around. Yet it has been my money paying solely for her care for years. And I was thinking, what about Martin? Because remember, Martin's saying, ooh, I, I got my alimony for wife number three pays for mama's care. So maybe it paid for mama's care uh, while Cyrus was in Pentonville. But Cyrus says um, he's the one who takes care of their mother's um, business, you know, her, her finances, her care. You know, so anyway, um, he goes, but he says, I continue to try. He says, then I have you and my brother who just turn your nose up at me. He says, so I just want to know, Laura, what prompted this change of heart in you? And Laura was shocked. She was kind of like, huh, here, I'm here trying to do an olive branch and he's acting like this. And I'm thinking, but girl, he's got feelings too. Even though he's evil Cyrus Renault, Laura has always been his Achilles heel, always. And he goes, from the time I knew you were my sister, I have tried to get your approval, tried to get to know you, right? And, and he has. So anyway, I got my blind dog. I have, a, I have these old fashioned, you know, doors that, slide out from the wall and go you know instead of doors that come in and out it just slides so I have it kind of closed and she has this donut around her head so she doesn't scratch her eyes she's got a little eye infection so she can't get through the little part that I left open I'm gonna have to go let her out so but anyway so Laura Laura told him look I'm trying I am trying to meet you halfway. She's, she's, excuse me, it's going, and he said, when Spencer came to Pentonville, your grandson, I moved heaven and earth to make sure he was protected. And she goes, and, but, and thank you for that, you know? And he almost said, and when your son was almost killed by your daughter in law, I made sure he received medical care and mended. But see, he didn't say that. Because he did. He, it was him that had Nicholas cared for. So anyway, she said, I'm going to try it. I'm taking steps. And he goes, I appreciate that. And so she goes, well, okay, I'm going to leave now and let you finish up your work. And he goes, Laura. And she turned around. She goes, yes, Cyrus. And he goes, I'm going to be out of town for a few days. I don't want you to think I'm going resorting back on my old ways. I am going to spend some time with my mother. He says, whether she talks to me or not. And Laura just looked at him like, oh, that's sad. She just kind of turned and walked away because he's like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to go and hold her hands, tell her whatever I got to bring her her hummingbird cake. Right. So anyway, that that's how that went. And that was about it. You know, nothing else truly, really happened. But it was a pretty good episode. I, I, you know, I can't complain too, too bad, you know, on that. So let's go to comment corner, comment corner. Now we have a number of comments today. I'm going to have to use my stopwatch because I'm not going to be able to get through them all. Kim says, good review. 
I think Ned is right about Michael making that deal because I think Michael and Drew is about to be set up uh, whatever deal they made and where they go, where they are going to Michael and Drew. I think it's a setup. Yeah, it's going to be Drew. It's, it's going to end up being abducted. Um, and they should have listened to Ned. Um, and like I said uh, a week ago, pay attention to CJ keep, you mean TJ, TJ keep running into Portia. So what TJ is Curtis's nephew, if Molly and TJ don't get it together, um, and if Curtis doesn't give, <laughs> give Portia no bedtime, I don't trust that man. Oh, now you skipped. Um, I don't trust the man that went in there and gave Carly the money. I don't trust him. I think he's going to bring to, he's about to bring the storyline in about Pike. He is. He is working for Pikeman big time. He's high up on the chain. And he also is the head of the WSB. So if, the, if in fact they're bringing Lorenzo Alcazar to the soap, Alcazar is going to be the boss. If they do not, this guy is carrying double duty, right? Because he even talked to his guy, Hume, talking about how, yeah, it was a little difficult, but they sure did get Frisco Jones booted from being the director of the WSB. So this now this guy has more control. And he goes, look, look. no, he goes, but isn't it going to look, you know, cause some question with you not being in the WSB office? He goes, nope. He said, I'll be able to do what I want to do from anywhere in the world. He says, and right now it's here. So that uh, that's how that went. Um, let's see. Uh, talking about people who set up Sunny all the time. It was Cy well, Cyrus was setting up Sunny for the the whole information on Pikeman that he gave to the feds. Um, Cyrus, uh, when he was in, in jail, everybody kept wondering who killed Austin. We should know it was Cyrus. Austin was about to give him up. Um, it wasn't Cyrus personally, but it was one of Cyrus's people. Pike men had nothing to do with that. No, I don't think Pike men had anything to do with Austin being killed. I am says Trey was Kate slash Connie's son, a product of rape. I forgot all about that, which resulted in her alter ego. Trey's dad was Sonny's adversary and had Trey target Chrissy. So he could use them to take over Sonny's territory. Trey's dad tried to kill Chrissy, but Trey died instead. Kate slash Connie never remembered the birth uh, because the alter ego, ego protected her. Um, she hated Sonny for not protecting her, meaning Connie? Well, yeah, deep down, I guess she did. Uh, Nikisha says, parents and children don't always have the same complexion, which you're right about that, Nikisha, especially in soap operas. Um, by logic, Trina couldn't be Taggart or Curtis's daughter, I know. The original person that played Trina could have been. The one when she was uh, probably 15, 14, 15, she could have. She would have been a product of that mix. User says, congratulations to Chase in Brooklyn. Hi, review lady. I hope you have a good day. Why, thank you. Thank you, user. Uh, I am says, TJ should have talked to his mom or Curtis instead of needy Portia. She projected and gave him a woman's perspective. Men process differently. She basically stereotyped him as if men, men do not grieve over the loss of a child. I know. And that was TJ's blood. I forgot Julian Jerome's name. Oh, you said Jerome. And I said, well, Ava's brother's name was Julian. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And look, and I didn't even connect that. Um, Eduardo says, I'm enjoying the chemistry between the new Molly and Christina combo and how this Molly blends in with her sisters and their mom, Alexis. This one is a good fit. This one is, I like her best of all so far. Lisa says, I think Selena was dealing drugs or laundering money through the Savoy. Cause I remember she said my shipmate came in tonight, Curtis, and here's your cut when she gave him a big envelope one time. Remember that? Um, she told Curtis and Marshall she wanted the Savoy because it was already established and running very well in town. She did not want to buy another place and have to set it up 
uh, because it took too much money. I haven't heard anything about it uh, for some time. I'm wondering what happened with Curtis and his club. Is Marshall and his bartender still running it? I don't know. Really, I'm wondering too. Uh, Lisa says, I'm so sick of Nina blaming Carly and Drew for insider trading. It was because she had Martin push for an investigation. They were they were not interested in what Carly and Drew had done before Martin called them. That guy that spoke with Michael told him that. Uh, that told him that from the, uh, the, the Fed's office that he had in, inside. Uh, Lisa says, I came into the show when Christina and her professor Parker uh, had moved in with her. Well, actually, Christina moved in with Parker. Uh, Alexis hated and felt that the professor took advantage of Christina. Sunny, of course, accepted it. Now Christina needs to talk with Blaze about being a surrogate for Molly and TJ. Uh, maybe, eventually, not right now. They just shared one, uh, two kisses. Uh, I don't let you help me make life offering, altering decisions just because you kissed me twice and brought me some wine. Now, eventually, as they get closer, yes, but Christina and Blaze are not in any kind of real committed relationship at all. They just are very attracted to each other. Uh, Lisa says, I do remember they had an issue with no power for what is for a while while they all were at Charlie's and stayed warm and had food. I don't remember that. Uh, Lisa says TJ would not apologize to Molly. She should be apologizing to him. You mean should not? I don't. I do like this Molly much better than the last few tries. I know. Uh, he should stick to his choice of waiting because with Christina getting into a relationship with Blaze, she will not uh, try to become a mama to the baby. Meaning, she yes, yeah, she would be just dis not distracted, but if she's not in a relationship, the baby would all be the only thing she could focus on. Uh, Lisa says, Nina is setting her up, herself up for trouble by complaining to Sunny about keeping secrets about things miss secret keeper from sunny about her actions ned is being stupid complaining about michael's business actions michael kept elq from going uh kept elq going while ned was playing songs ned is jealous because michael did better than he could he is trying to find fault and lucy says hello hello daily recap lady you look good today, Sheila. Lucy, you used my real name. <laughs> I wonder how much longer till we can put Barbara Jean, Bobby Spencer to rest. I know, I don't know when they're going to actually do that. And then P.E. says, remember... That other drop storyline where a man, the man invited Curtis to join the WSB. Maybe Curtis will join as a way to find out who shot him. Well, unfortunately, Curtis can't join in a wheelchair. Uh, Sabrina says, hey, Daily Recap Lady, Nina's storyline is coming to an end. I think Brooklyn, uh oh, not Brooklyn. I think Bryn, Brendan uh, will kidnap Nina and Carly. That would be interesting. PE says, I'm realizing that Ned is a jealous, obnoxious jerk, whether he's Eddie or Ned. Uh, what does ELQ actually represent in the corporate world? I know. Has he actually been in the office since he decided to be Ned again? My dog is scratching her eye. Can you stop her from scratching that eye? Uh, again, Ned has some nerve and this is N.K. Rose says, Ned has some nerve being upset with Sonny uh, with all her knives, not Ned, Nina, with all her lies. N.K. Rose also says, Christina is going to change her mind again now that she has a girlfriend. I don't think so. I, and then Lisa says, I think Christina will talk to Blaze about it and she'll be all for it because Blaze is all about family and helping her sister is a good move but I don't think it will cause problems for them. I don't think so either. 
And then K. Rose says, I completely forgot that Christina was married to a second person. There's only one marriage. She was never married to Keeper. N.K. Rose says, Pike Men is going to mess with Drew's plane to get closer to Carly. And N.K. Rose says, I remember Kiefer and Trey. I combined Kiefer and Trey in my head, but Christina was never married to Kiefer. Um, Ron says, Drew is changing. He's starting to get power hungry, and Carly sees this in him. Uh, P.E. says, he just may have an infection from the beating <laughs> and subsequent surgery basic no that wouldn't affect his mood like that basically he is pissed he's a former navy seal uh that got beat by down by two punks then once he was released he has to listen to ned's smack uh never ask him how he's doing ned just went in on drew and michael yes ned sure did all right, everybody, I'm 11 minutes. Oh, but you know what? I've only got a few more comments here. Let me let me hurry up and finish. I am, says Chrissy. Chrissy flirted with Valerie Spencer, but they were only friends. Chrissy was only has only six big storylines. Um, need stimmas from a little girl with Sam's miscarriage. Yeah, Sam's miscarriage gave Christina her stem cells. Kidnapped by AJ. Kiefer, Trey, and Parker. Those are storylines. And Willow's baby daddy cult, you mean shy low. And Lashanta says, the man, the WSB director since Frisco was gone, has been the WSB director since Frisco, Frisco was gone. Brennan, I know. So Forsyth, Anna, and Sonny all are wrapped together. Yes, there's going to all, all be in one plan. And Lashanta says, congratulations to Brooklyn and Chase. Lois told Ned exactly right. I see why Sam said Drew is different. He's not carefree like before Pittenville. I'm all, I'm over TJ and Molly and their surrogate. Chrissy, they treated, they treated you horrible. I knew Christina was gay. Parker was her last relationship. Uh, she hasn't been with a man since Kiefer. I can't stand Nina. And then Fanny says, um, however, when they get ready to write Bobby out, but we will all be ready with them to see it all, see how it all ends. I know that'll be a sad farewell. And then Linda says, it's possible that they won't kill the character of Bobby off, but only have the character off screen, like Elizabeth Graham, because Jackie hasn't been on contract, but is only reoccurring. Uh, that's just a thought. Yeah. They haven't shown the actress that plays uh, Audrey. Uh, was it Audrey Howard? Steve, Audrey Hardy, Steve Hardy's wife. They haven't shown Graham Graham in probably 10 years now. So anyway, that's all it. For, that's all the comments from Comic Corner. Thanks for your comments, everybody. I will be back tomorrow for another daily recap of General Hospital.